I just have to come right out and say it. I'm a complete and unrepented graphics YouTube friendly word. But I also love cars and racing, so it's a good thing for me then that racing games and great graphics go hand in hand. Sometimes. There are those games that developers have carefully crafted to give us 4K of the detail, 120 frames of variable refresh rate smoothness, and all in the glorious high dynamic range. And I'm down for all of that. I've got the TV, the cables, and the console. And I also have the capture card. Two of them. Only when I need to record some gameplay. What's up with that? That's not what I signed up for. Elgato and Ever Media, you have some serious explaining to do. First up, a little disclaimer I want to interject here. This isn't really a video that I should be making. Someone in the space like uh, Epox Vox, for instance, should be covering this. Only that guys in that space have reviewed these cards and they've given, a, given them both a complete pass within the specs of what they say they can achieve. Uh, so it comes down to me to point out these issues. And what exactly are my issues with these cards? Up until recently, I did all of my recording for consoles on this thing. This is the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K, and for a long time, it just did the job. But, you know, I also have this one. This is the Elgato 4K60 Pro. It also did the job, but was my backup because the Avermedia card always gave me slightly better colors. Both of these are 60 Hertz cards, which would allow me to play in 4K60 HDR while recording perfectly in 4K60 SDR. But at that point, you know, all was right in my world. My recordings were good, the image quality was great. But then I went and did a thing. I went and got a new TV. This one was an LG G1, and of course that meant it came with HDMI 2.1. HDMI 2.1 doesn't actually mean anything now, but back in the day, it meant that it supported 4K 120Hz and also variable refresh rates. And a good thing it did, because around the same time, Polyphony Digital also did a thing. They released the 120Hz update for GT7, which meant I could take full advantage of my new setup and all its tasty features. But I did just say that these two cards are 60Hz cards, right? These are HDMI 2.0 cards, give them a 4K 120Hz signal, and they'll just give you back a blank screen in return. So if I wanted to record my 120Hz gameplay like in the GT7 updates, forget about it. I would be racing 120Hz, but then you know, back out into the menu, switch to 60 hertz mode, and then hit a random button on a HDMI switch, and then switch inputs on my TV. That would switch my whole setup over to the capture card, so it could capture the old school 60 hertz signal. What I needed was a HDMI 2.1 capture card, but they only started to be released in early 2024, a better part of a decade after the HDMI 2.1 spec was finalized. But finally, well, here they are. Not that one. This one. Here they are. Now, let's start with, not this one, but this one. This is the Avermedia, Avermedia Live Gamer 2.1, all of the letters and whatever. It's this one. I don't really care. If it could just do what it says on the tin, I'd be quite happy with it. Uh, for the price, uh, it's fine. If it does what it says it does. But how well does it do what it says it does? Well, that is what's playing right now. This is GT7 in 4K 120Hz HDR VRR captured on the Live Gamer 2.1 in 4K 60 SDR. And yeah, it seems fine. Till this bit. Do you see that? Let me play it back again, slower this time. See the colors that move down the sky? It's probably hard to see on YouTube, but trust me in person, this is really visible, particularly because it's moving. This is known as color banding, and for anyone trying to use a HDMI 2.1 capture card, this is the bane of their existence. It never used to happen in 60 hertz on the old cards. I was pissed off with this and getting nowhere with Avermedia support, so I switched this thing out. I changed to this. This is the Elgato 4KX, which is, as you can see, a waste of money. It does exactly the same thing with the same problem. But you know, everyone's gonna be furiously typing. The PS5 can do this on its own. Why not use that? Well, to be honest, it's way better than I expected. The quality isn't too bad and the color banding, as you can see, is minimal. It's close enough to what I would call the same as what happens on the TV directly from the PS5. The problem with capturing the PS5 
natively is that it captures in HDR and also in the WebM format. Both present me with issues like my editing software not knowing what WebM is, and one there's some uh, simple hack of just changing the file name to MKV, when I do this, sees the audio track just disappear. And then I still need to know, uh, we still need to apply what's known as a LUT to alter the color from HDR, you know, this washed out garbage you can see here, to SDR, which looks pretty nice, but man, I went through all of this so my setup could be simplified, so I could play and not have to push all these buttons everywhere and switch and record in a mode I don't want to use. This is all for simplicity. Converting WebM, the LUTs and all the rest, that's not simple. It gets worse. You see, using any capture card, you run the HDMI cable from the console to the capture card, then a different cable from the capture card to your TV. Any signal needs to go through the capture card before getting to your TV, and this is called pass-through. Now, I used to believe, and it seems intuitive, that pass-through is just the signal passing through unchanged. Yeah, right. I'm getting this same color banding in pass-through, so it's not just going into videos I make, but I'll be seeing it every time I'm racing. This is directly off the TV with the signal passed through the Avamedia 4K 2.1. Now look at the rolling sky, and here is the same thing without the capture card in the middle. There is zero visible banding. Luckily, the Elgato card does not suffer from as much pass-through degradation after their new beta firmware. It was pretty terrible at first, so that's a win I guess, but there is a third issue. These captures just aren't smooth. Using the base PS5 recording as a control, I can sync the Elgato 4KX recording going into the first turn, but then a little later they are out of sync. The same happens with the Avamedia recording as well. It's not just getting out of sync with the PS5 recording, but they both get out of sync with each other as well. When I look at the recordings made with either of these, I feel they are choppy and the desync backs up my take on that. Overall, I'm really disappointed with both uh, Elgato and Avamedia. I waited so long for these cars to be on the market and after all that wait, they're just half-baked. But at least Elgato is working on fixing it. Mm, slowly. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using a beta firmware that um, Elgato has supplied and that really did improve the color banding. But how they release it with such an issue in the first place is just beyond me. Avamedia support though. They gave me the usual run around like, did you try plugging it into a computer? You know you can't plug it into a cheeseburger, right? I mean, I did my best not to blast their customer support with snark and answered all of their dumbass questions till the end until they sent me a return address, which was confusing. They didn't say anything about a refund, um, but I left them hanging as I would rather make this video and warn everyone else about the issue rather than just getting my own cash back. As for me, I really want to be able to take advantage of my PS5 Pro and the 120 hertz and not having to fall back to 60 hertz when recording. I think I'll just choose maybe the Elgato. I mean, Avamedia haven't updated their firmware in almost a year now and Elgato seems to care just a little bit more about any issue their card has. I'll just use a HDMI 2.1 splitter to bypass the card completely while racing and if you see some strange color banding or stuttering in any of my future videos, well, Curse the names of Elgato and Avamedia, just for me. Ah, I have neglected you. This is tea. It's advertiser friendly tea.